Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk to you about choosing the best deck to build your own electric skateboard on. Now, if you're new to skateboarding, this could be a really, really complex topic. I mean, there's a lot of slang words and terminology that get thrown about when we talk about decks. Now, uh, the basics, a deck, it's what you stand on. I mean, the, the trucks go on it, components for your electric skateboard need to attach to it somewhere and you stand on the top of it. A deck can come in many shapes and sizes, but there are three really important things to think about when you go to choose the, the deck that you're going to use for your electric skateboard build. They are wheelbase, the flex, and the shape, so three things. So let's go through those three things, and at the end of the video, you'll know how to choose the best electric skateboard deck. So the wheelbase, every deck that you look at will have a different wheelbase. So when you mount your trucks on your deck, the distance between the base plates on the truck is your wheelbase essentially. That dictates how many electronic components can fit on there. Most importantly, the wheelbase determines how big the battery can be because the motor controller and the receiver for your hand controller are very small. They don't take up a lot of room. It's the battery that really can take up lots of room, especially when you build a, an electric skateboard with really long range, which is the beauty of building your own skateboard. You can make it whatever you want. So the wheelbase is important. For instance, if you take the Space Cell Pro uh, case here and try to fit it on this deck, it's not gonna fit. Maybe if that motor was mounted out the back, you could do it. So you can see here, the wheelbase presents a constraint. If it's too short, it limits what you can put in between it. And then you have to look at other things like mounting the motor out the back, which is possible. Obviously, I just flip those trucks around. You can't do that. You need the mount needs to be designed to be reversed. So you can't just turn the truck around like I did, but for an example, it works. So the other way you could get around this, if the motor isn't mounted on a bracket, if the motor was in the actual wheel, like a hub motor, you've got a lot more space. And then the Space Cell Pro 4 will fit on this deck. Wheelbase is important because it dictates the amount of components. Now this, particular, there's nothing in it, but this particular battery shell can take a 10S4P battery. Now, if you look at that in watt hours, that's about 360 watt hours. It's more than triple the size of the battery in a boosted board, for instance. And that's probably good for about 36 kilometers. The flexibility of the deck is the other thing that's quite important to think about. Um, I can't really demonstrate that without standing on a deck, but generally the thinner the deck or the less layers apply, the more flexible the deck will be. The problem with a flexible deck is you, you can see clearly with my example here, this, this here isn't flexible, okay? Most batteries are not flexible. Unfortunately, the technology for batteries isn't at that stage yet. So you really have to be careful when you're selecting a deck. The rider weight also will dictate whether a deck flexes or not. So I'm a fairly large guy, 95 kilos. If I stand on a deck that a, a 70 kilo guy stands on, the flex is gonna be very different. So lighter guys can probably get away with thinner decks because they'll flex less. Now, that's not saying that you can't build an electric skateboard on a deck that flexes. You certainly can, but what it does mean is you have to think about how you lay out the components. For instance, most decks flex, the flex point is between the two trucks. So it's the center of the wheelbase is where the most flexion will occur. Now, if you try to put something solid across there that can't bend like a battery, you're gonna put a lot of pressure on that battery and it's gonna damage the battery. 
So that's why booster boards, for instance, made their deck with the battery up the front and another case at the back with the electronics there. It's a split enclosure design and they've run wires between those two cases and that allows the deck to flex. The loaded Vanguard deck that they use is a sweet deck. It's very flexible. Um, and yeah, you've got to be careful of that. I mean, especially if you're designing your electric skateboard to go really fast. When you're traveling really fast, you want to be able to make subtle movements in your ankle and you want that to directly translate through the deck into the truck where it pivots. Now, if you've got a deck that flexes and you make these subtle movements in your ankle, the deck can actually uh, diminish that um, movement and it can actually dampen it. Um, and that means your, your response times for turning and pivoting the trucks will be diminished as well. So just think about that when you buy your deck. Do you want it to be flexible? And if so, you have to redesign how your components might fit because rigid components won't fit on it. And do you want to go fast? If you want to go fast, you want a solid deck. And then you can use things like this that just go straight on. Now the deck shape is the other third, the, the third thing to consider. This is a, a deck with a drop down, for instance. There are many other things that fall into what I call the shape of the deck. You can have decks that have um, concave, but see the edges have turned up. That's, that's called concave. Concave is great to have on a deck. If you just had a flat plank for a deck, it would, wouldn't feel as responsive in your, under your feet when you're trying to turn and things like that. The concave, it goes up under the ball of your foot and up a little bit on your heel. And it, it sort of amplifies how much angle there is in your ankle. So it allows you to control the turns. It also locks your foot into the deck somewhat and stops your foot wanting to go off the edge of the deck, which under heavy braking, you might find your foot wants to slip forward. I mean, if it was perfectly flat, um, your foot might just slip off there. Uh, you can see with this deck here, there's actually a, a drop down section in this deck. So it actually can help lock your foot in. The only problem with a drop down is if your trucks are, are mounted here, the bottom of the deck where my hand is here is much lower to the ground. That means any of the components that you mount on the, the bottom side are going to be much closer to the ground. You can sort of see that there. You, you want maximum clearance under your deck. Otherwise, you can scrape all your electric components and if your battery is not well protected, it can actually be damaged. So be careful choosing a deck that has a drop down platform like that. You can get different levels of drop down. You can have a micro drop. You can get half inch, you can get bigger. Um, the, if you go like this, you probably wanna go larger wheels and that gives you more clearance. The other thing that you'll see on a, in the shape of a deck is camber. Now camber, um, this deck has a little bit of camber. Camber is where you have an arch kind of shape. Uh, the camber tends to actually remove a little bit of, um, it's, like a, it's like a suspension system nearly, and it can actually smooth the ride out if you're going on a bumpy road at high speeds, um, that is not great. You, you, want, you want every subtle movement in your foot to transfer into the trucks and change your pathway. You don't want to try to turn and then only get a little bit of a response in the trucks because the camber and the flex absorbed it. The, the other problem with decks that have that camber, that arch in it, it's very difficult to mount anything that's curved to something that's curved. If it flexes, you know, that's, you can't mount rigid things to that. Rocker. Rocker is like the opposite of camber. Um, instead of an arch between the two trucks, you actually have an opposite arch, like a rocking horse. It makes building an electric skateboard really difficult because once again, you can't easily mount something 
that's straight and non-flexible to something that is curved. So I would avoid that. Uh, you also might hear people talking about W concave. This deck has W concave in it. What that means is there's a little dome or a little bump just under where the arch of your foot would sit. Um, and that can actually help. It can be more comfortable. It can actually help how your foot sits on the deck at, at high speeds, having, having your foot planted nicely onto the W concave can be really good. It can allow much finer control over your ankle angle. It can make mounting components a little bit more tricky because you've got this, like the dimple on this side and you know, obviously a perfectly flat surface is good, uh, but fortunately the, um, the case we made here, it actually can fit on decks with a W concave pretty good. You can sort of see that here there's a little bit of a dimple, but once you screw that down, because of the rubber foam edge here, uh, when you screw it down, it actually mounts on there quite nicely. So W concave, I quite like. It also tends to make the deck more stiff. Having that shape there, it actually structurally stiffens the deck. So you tend to find the sort of the downhill style longboard decks that have the W concave tend to be quite stiff and they tend to make really good electric skateboards, especially if you're gonna go really fast. Uh, this particular deck also has a slight drop in it. You, you can't, maybe you can't see that, but it does have a slight drop. So this particular deck um, is a nice shape actually, because, and I'm not talking about the cutout shape exactly, I'm just talking about the properties of the deck here, the, the platform. Your foot can actually lock in quite nicely because you've got the concaved edge, you've got the slight drop, so your foot sits in there and you've got the slight dome for the arch of your foot. So it can give you a really solid platform. So these are a few subtle things you might wanna look for. So hopefully after watching this video, you can start to see some of the really cool benefits of building your own electric skateboard. Everyone has their own style of deck and their own way of riding. So the beauty of building your own electric skateboard is you can pick and choose. I mean, some decks, might not be compatible with this because they flex, but that's the beauty of it. You're building your own skateboard. You can do whatever you want. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.